Hello and thank you for attending. Have you ever needed your office phone during a disaster situation and got the all circuits are busy message? Or try to use your cell phone to contact key personnel during an emergency and couldn't get through? Well, today's webinar will help make sure you do. We will explain the priority telecommunication services offered by the Department of Homeland Security's Office of Emergency Communication, which will benefit key personnel and locations whenever there is a commercial communications network overload or outage. First, let's talk about the Office of Emergency Communications, or OEC. OEC leads the Department of Homeland Security's National Security and Emergency Preparedness Communications Activities. OEC provides federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial organizations access to emergency communication services, creating a single resource for stakeholders and a unified approach for improving interoperable communication. OEC also works with public safety organizations to improve and enhance our nation's planning, preparedness, coordination, response, and communications, operability, and interoperability capabilities so you can communicate at all times. Emergency responders rely on a mix of communications media during an emergency. Land mobile radios, cellular, landline, etc. But all these media are commercially provided and are shared by the general public. High call volumes or network outages during an emergency can even overload those networks. When that happens, you may not be able to communicate at a critical moment. Commercial communication systems are multi-billion dollar investments. They are reliable and redundant, but you need to share them with the public. Under normal circumstances, your calls will go through because carriers design for the busy hour, but there may be times that strain the system. So let's look at a few scenarios in which commercial network overload or outages can happen. Network overload or outages often make it difficult for emergency responders and government officials to communicate when using commercial wireless and wireline networks. Here we'll look at several scenarios where you might encounter congestion in the networks. First, there are both natural and man-made disasters to think about. Earthquakes, mass evacuations, terrorist attacks, and extreme weather are events that can trigger a massive instantaneous surge of thousands of people making calls. That immediately overloads commercial communication networks. Depending on the event's severity, network overload can last hours, even days. It does take a large event to overload the system, but of course... That's when you'll need it most. A second scenario might be heavier than normal peak period calling for a number of reasons. Telecommunications companies engineer networks to handle average peak calling levels. When peak calling exceeds the average amount, networks can become overloaded and cause call failures. You can liken that to a heavier than normal afternoon traffic commute combined with the end of a school day in a local area. Travel lanes slow to a halt. That's similar to not getting your call through on an overloaded network. Another scenario might occur when a lot of callers gather in one place. Scheduled or spontaneous events including parades, protests, or other large gatherings in a concentrated area often overload networks, particularly cellular networks near the event. And finally, an overall network outage caused by various incidents. A cable cut or other network infrastructure damage can reduce call processing capacity within the service area, resulting in network overload. Extreme weather can also cause network outages. When network congestion occurs, it's beneficial to have a service similar to HOV or Highway Express lanes to be able to work around the congestion and get your call through. Fortunately, two priority telecommunication services available through the OEC can significantly increase call all completion rates when cellular or landline networks are congested or impaired. The Government Emergency Telecommunication Service, or GETS, capability has been operational since 1994. GETS includes priority enhancements in U.S. long distance and local service provider networks nationwide. The Wireless Priority Service, or WPS, capability has been operational since 2002 on major U.S. wireless carriers. In many years of operation, GETS and WPS have supported vital communication capabilities during numerous hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, wildfires, and acts of terrorism. Now let's spend a few moments talking about GETS. So what is GETS? GETS is a priority calling card service that enhances your probability of call completion during times of landline network congestion or outage. GETS calls can be placed from virtually any telephone, 
including satellite phones. Authorized calls placed using landline phones and WPS-capable cell phones receive priority. There are even some GETS priority features in WPS-capable cellular networks. GETS uses the full capacity of commercial voice networks to achieve greater than 95% call completion rates at 10 times overload and often performs above 95%. OEC has issued more than 350,000 GETS cards, including cards to various public safety users and commercial infrastructure providers. Making a GETS call requires four simple steps. First, determine you have dial tone and dial the universal GETS access number. Next, when prompted, enter your GETS personal identification number or PIN and the destination telephone number. The network automatically routes your call. Instructions for using GETS are on the front of your GETS card. All you need to do is add the telephone number you would need to reach during a response. There's a good bit of information located on the back of your GETS card. Typically, you'll be able to use the universal GETS access number, 710-627-4387. However, alternative GETS access numbers are provided on the back of the GETS card should attempts with the universal number fail. Simply use one of the carrier-specific access numbers in place of the universal GETS access number to attempt your call. Note that you can use the Sprint GETS access number or the second of the two Verizon GETS access numbers to make calls to toll-free destination numbers, which are noted by the triangle symbol. It also contains the dialing instructions for making a WPS call on the back of the card should you forget how. At the bottom of the card, websites for obtaining information on GETS and WPS are provided. Over to the right is the 24-hour user assistance telephone number, which can be used to report trouble using GETS or WPS when you're making test calls or when using them during training exercises. The number can also be used for assistance in situations where you need emergency GETS cards or WPS activation. Also located to the right is a destination number that can be used to make specific familiarization calls to maintain proficiency in using GETS and WPS. Finally, you'll get the mailing address used to return a GETS card to the government should you find one. Here we see the GETS and WPS capable networks. When you make a GETS call, your call receives priority treatment across the GETS and WPS capable networks to the called landline phone or cellular phone. These networks have priority features provisioned in them that are maintained in a constant state of readiness. No activation is required. We also see the GETS card, which we always have with us to make a GETS call from any device, anywhere when networks are congested and the probability of completing a normal call is reduced. Let's first take a look at how GETS calls are routed from originating devices through the networks to a destination landline phone. We'll begin with a GETS call originating from a landline phone. Make note that this depiction also applies to GETS calls from satellite phones. It's important to note here in the call flow that all GETS calls, regardless of origin or destination, are routed to one of three GETS inter-exchange carriers, AT&T, Sprint, or Verizon, for authentication. Now let's look at a GETS call originated from a cell phone. Note that the calling cellular phone does not need to have WPS to place a GETS call. Now let's look at how GETS calls are routed from originating devices through the networks to a destination cellular phone. Note that the called cellular phone does not need to have WPS to receive a GETS call. Let's begin again with a landline phone. I'll note here again that all GETS calls, regardless of origination or destination, are routed to one of three GETS inter-exchange carriers for authentication. Let's review some tips and actions you can take to ensure your emergency personnel are prepared to use GETS. First, distribute the GETS cards. Don't put them away in your desk with the intention of distributing them during an event. You never know where your personnel may be. Also, make sure everyone knows what they are and how to make a GETS call. Make GETS practice or test calls periodically so that you know how to make a GETS call automatically and include the use of GETS in training exercises. Make sure your facility allows use of the 710 area code as some systems need to be modified to allow it. Often operation centers or teleconferences use toll-free dialing. Use the Sprint GETS access number or the second of the two Verizon GETS access numbers provided on the back of the GETS card if you're calling a toll-free destination number as not all GETS access numbers support calling toll-free numbers. Program the GETS number and PIN in cell phones and add prefix key numbers for important locations you'll need to call, such as your operations center. And one of the most important best practices is to always carry your GETS card with you. You never know when there will be an issue in the communications network, and you may need to make an emergency call. Next, I'll talk about WPS. 
Wireless Priority Service, WPS, is an add-on feature to existing cellular service that provides priority for voice calls originated from WPS-enabled cell phones. Cellular congestion usually occurs in the local cell. WPS provides priority on the connections between the user's cell phone and the cell tower and across the network to the called cellular, landline, or satellite device. You may ask, why do I need WPS when GETS calls can be made from cellular phones? Having WPS is essential because it provides priority on the most critical segment of a cellular call, the originating radio connection from your cell phone to the tower. No special phones are required for WPS. WPS is available from all nationwide and several regional cellular service providers. WPS uses priority features in the commercial wireless voice networks to achieve greater than 90% call completion rates. Nearly 150,000 WPS subscriptions have been issued, including subscriptions to public safety users at various levels of government. The chart shows the carriers available in various regions with the WPS availability. As you're planning your WPS subscriptions, consider the carrier and WPS availability within your area. Making a WPS call is easy. Confirm you have a signal. Dial star 272 plus the 10-digit number you're calling. Push the send button. Here are some helpful tips for WPS. Once you've been notified WPS is activated on your cell phone, make the requested test call to be sure it's working. To maintain proficiency in making WPS calls, make WPS practice test calls regularly. Make the test calls from the cell phone you'd use in an emergency to make sure the priority calling feature is available. Use the familiarization line as the destination number. When planning exercise for your organization, incorporate the use of WPS as part of the activities. This will give personnel the opportunity to place WPS calls and become proficient in making the calls as well as demonstrating the enhancement of pre-programming numbers in their own personal cell phone. In an emergency, it takes time and a good memory to look up a phone number and then manually dial star 272 plus the number. If you have an Android phone or BlackBerry, key numbers in your contact list can be pre-programmed with star 272. It's a good practice to pre-program your emergency numbers so WPS calls can be made with the push of a single button. For example, if you have John Smith's work, 202-555-1212 in your contacts, program John Smith work 2 with star 272 before the number. There may be occasions where your WPS call will not go through due to network congestion. Try using WPS plus GETS, which can improve the probability of your call completion. You can pre-program your phone to dial star 272 plus 710-627-4387 plus the pause symbol plus gets pinned so you only need to enter the final destination number. If you make changes in your mobile phone service, make a test WPS call to the familiarization number to ensure that WPS is still activated on your phone. Report calling trouble. If you encounter a problem while using GETS or WPS when making test calls or using them during a training exercise, report it to 800-818-4387 or 703-818-4387. Four three eight seven. The numbers are also located on the back of your GETS card. And finally, there is a GETS WPS dialer app available for Android smartphones and Blackberries. The app allows a user to make a GETS and or WPS call to a number in the contacts list on the phone or to manually enter a destination number. The dialer app is available at gets-wps.csgov.com forward slash apps. The app is available for Android and BlackBerry phones. The Apple iOS version is in development. As public safety responders, your primary communications may be LAN mobile radio. During times of network congestion, GETS and WPS can be used as an alternative or to supplement LAN mobile radio communications for various uses, such as those listed on this slide. WPS and GETS have been successfully employed during regional and local responses. During Hurricane Harvey, emergency workers placed and connected 7,006 GETS calls, 796 WPS calls. During Hurricane Irma, they placed and connected 3,719 GETS calls and 3,859 WPS calls. During Hurricane Maria, 335 GETS calls and 511 WPS calls, all placed and connected. Let's review performance for some recent events. After Hurricane Harvey in August 2017, Michael Case with Ohio Task Force 1 in FEMA's Urban Search and Rescue Branch stated, 
We were outside of Corpus Christi, making our way to Rockford, trying to contact the Texas Department of Transportation to find fuel. We tried with regular calls, and it didn't work. Then we put in the WPS code, and it worked. Wherever there was cell coverage, we were able to get through with WPS. After the Kentucky ice storm in 2014, Richard Bartlett, Getz POC for the Kentucky Hospital Association, provided this testimonial. Mr. Bartlett stated, During the ice storms in March, I had to contact a hospital in central Kentucky, which was experiencing a power failure and then a generator failure on top of that. When I tried to reach out to them to look at potential assistance and discuss possible evacuation options, all the telephone circuits were overloaded. All I was getting were fast busy indications or messages that all circuits were busy. I used my GETS card and was able to connect to the hospital. The flooding that occurred in Louisiana in August 2016 reported as a once-in-a-century weather event. Governor John Bell Edwards called the disaster truly historic. Network overload and pyramid caused massive communications problems during the event. Tens of thousands lost electrical power. The 911 center was forced to relocate, and there were widespread reports of cellular and wireline outages. Willie Collins, an ESF2 communications planner, advised the OEC, My cellular calls would not go through unless I used WPS. My calls went through. That's the bottom line. It worked really well for us. So let's now talk about how your organization can implement GETS and WPS. Or if you already have some GETS and WPS services, how you can expand your program to be fully prepared. Designate a GETS WPS point of contact for your organization who has the authority to make decisions regarding GETS and WPS user authorization and administration. Some of the point of contact responsibilities include requesting GETS and WPS service for new users and managing current GETS and WPS users, canceling GETS cards when they are no longer required or in use, reviewing GETS and WPS usage reports, for example, call detail records, validating the accuracy of their GETS and WPS subscriber list on an annual basis. The point of contact will have access to their online GETS WPS account. Point of contact requests GETS and WPS for an initial group of users or key functions and locations through the online system. Larger organizations can submit an online spreadsheet using the GETS WPS spreadsheet request template. The point of contact distributes GETS cards and confirms WPS activations. If your organization has an existing GETS WPS account, consider conducting an organizational preparedness review to ensure all potential responding personnel and locations are fully prepared in the event of communications network overload or outage. It's up to each organization to determine the number of GETS cards and WPS subscribed cellular devices they need as there is no maximum or set rules. The only requirement is that each person or place meets GETS WPS qualification guidelines. Individuals who need to communicate during an emergency should carry a personal GETS card and have a WPS subscribed cell phone. Specific locations from where personnel would need to communicate should have an easy to access cache of GETS cards and WPS subscribed cellular devices. As a result of hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and other natural or man-made disasters, telecommunication service carriers frequently experience a surge in requests for new services and requirements to restore existing services. Loss of services to critical communication functions such as to emergency operation centers, 911 centers, and other critical facilities can result in harm to the population, loss of property, threaten the security posture of the U.S., so in response to that threat, the OEC provides the Telecommunications Service Priority Program. TSP is an FCC-mandated service established in 1988. Similar to needing the HOV to make priority emergency calls, TSP provides a fast pass, like the ones issued at amusement parks, to repair damaged circuits or install new ones. TSP designated circuits, which are the physical connections between the user facility and the service provider's network, have top priority for repair in the event of a service outage. And TSP designated new circuit installations have top priority for new service establishment. TSP is mandatory for all telecommunications companies categorized as common carriers. Know that there is a charge for each TSP designated circuit or service set by state utility regulators. TSP can make a difference for rapid repair of damaged circuits at EOCs, hospitals, PSAPs, power facilities, government headquarters, financial institutions, and many other critical sites. These damages don't require a disaster to happen. Someone using a backhoe could cut cables resulting in a loss of service. 
Even squirrels can cause damage to infrastructure by chewing through a cable. They've even been known to bite into a fiber optic line, knocking out a county's 911 emergency telephone service. However, TSP must be requested and assigned before an outage occurs. On a normal day, your public safety dispatch will be prioritized. Note that during the first three weeks after Katrina, Bell South crews were all working only TSP repairs. Priority installation reduces the time it takes to activate communication capabilities needed to support operations such as disaster response and recovery and large-scale national security events. Establishing TSP is similar to requesting GETS and WPS. The first step is to identify a TSP point of contact to request a TSP account. Next, most POCs will need to work with telecommunications staff to identify which mission-critical circuits should have TSP restoration priority and to collect the circuit-specific information needed to submit a TSP service request. POC submits a TSP service request. Once approved, a TSP code is sent to the POC, who then provides the TSP code to the telecommunications service provider. Once this occurs, your telecommunications staff should update any applicable service repair or installation procedures. TSP restoration priority can be applied to wireline circuits, both voice and data, that support your national security or emergency preparedness mission. It should not be applied to every circuit in your organization, only the minimum necessary to continue operating. It's important to identify the critical functions and the supporting circuits. Here are some of the important best practices in working with your TSP program. First, designate primary and secondary points of contact who will be responsible for making the request for TSP services should your organization experience an outage, whether caused by weather, circuit failures, etc. There should also be a successor line of authority to be followed should the point of contact not be available. Maintain a record of all TSP codes and corresponding circuits to facilitate a quick response in case of an emergency. The TSP process, codes, and circuit information should be incorporated as part of the organization's emergency operations plan. You may want to consider route diversity for very critical circuits to include rerouting of services on a short-term basis. Work closely with your carrier to make sure all critical circuits are identified and codes are assigned to each of those circuits. And finally, review your regular monthly bills to ensure that TSP was assigned and that it continues to be part of your services. So, how do you budget for priority services, and what costs might your organization incur to be prepared for network overload or outage? First, for GETS, there is no charge to subscribe to GETS. The OEC reserves the right to bill for all GETS calls, for example, in the case of fraud. Since the inception of the GETS program, no GETS calls have been charged to the users. And for WPS, although most WPS service providers do not charge an activation fee or monthly recurring charge, they may charge a one-time service activation fee up to $10 and a maximum of $4.50 per month for each WPS-subscribed cellular device. All charge a per-minute fee of up to $0.75. Cents. Be sure to check with your service providers because rates do vary by provider. WPS can be billed directly to an organization and billed to personal accounts. There is no charge from the federal government for requesting and receiving a TSP code. However, service providers do have the option for charging fees, so check with your service provider for the applicable rate for each circuit. This chart just provides some examples of charges that might be incurred for registering your circuits for TSP service. Again, check with your local carriers to determine the actual charges in your service area. Listed here are OEC resources ready to help your organization be prepared should network overload or outage make it difficult for key personnel and locations to communicate at a critical moment. Websites for GETS, WPS, and TSP, and the Priority Telecommunications Service Center, staffed by a knowledgeable team with years of experience helping local, state, tribal governments establish, expand, and manage Priority Telecommunications Service programs. In addition to the Priority Telecommunications Service Center, OEC staff members are available at the numbers shown here to assist your organization. So, be prepared. And thank you for attending our webinar.